Hello, I'm Nolan Chen, Partner Solutions Architect at AWS. Hi, I'm Andrew Walco, and I lead the field engineering team at RCAI. Andrew, we've heard a lot about large language models, or LLMs, but lately I've been hearing about small language models, or SLMs. Can you tell us what an SLM is and how it differs from an LLM? Absolutely. So I think a good way to think about this is talking about a use case that we all understand. And we've all seen chatbots all over the market. And a lot of the chatbots that we all use in our day-to-day -day lives are powered by large language models, or as people call them, LLMs. And large language models are very, very large machine learning models which excel at generating text. And under the hood, these models are neural networks. And these neural networks are made up of things called parameters. And when we're talking about large language models, we are talking about hundreds of billions of parameters. And even for some closed source language models, there's predictions that they go above 2 trillion parameters. So we're talking hundreds of billion, all the way upwards of greater than 2 trillion parameters. Wow. However, on the small language model side of the things, you're talking about a very similar type of architecture. However, you're talking about way less parameters. So again, same type of neural network that you're involved in, but it's just less parameters. And at RC, we define a small language model as having less than 70 billion parameters. And this number isn't one that we just thought was a fun one that we could pull, but instead it's actually the parameter size that we found can be run efficiently on a single GPU instance, for example, ones on AWS. Mm -hmm. And by allowing these models to be on a single instance, you can run them effectively in your own environment without lots of complexity around networking and hooking different instances together. Got it. So even though a billion is normally a very large number, an SLM typically has less than 70 billion parameters. But yeah, we hear so much about how important parameters are. Can you talk a little bit more about these things called parameters and how the number of them translate into real world use cases? Yeah, absolutely. And there's a trade-off when it comes to parameters. So when we're talking about parameters, this is what the model is actually changing when it is trained. And models encompass the model's ability to generalize the data that it's trained on. So one way to think about it is with more parameters, so here we'll put another section for parameters, with a greater number of parameters, you increase the model's ability to generalize the data or be able to retain more information. So more data, can be retained. And this is great for a lot of use cases. However, depending on what your use case is, it might not be necessary. So for example, large language models can have the entire internet trained within them. Right? And this is awesome, but if you're a business, you might not need all of the information about sports games and cooking and different facets around, let's say, poems, right? So there's trade-offs with larger parameters, also means higher compute required to run them. So if we're talking about a less or smaller number of parameters, mm -hmm. that also means less latency when you run the models. This is due because the less number of parameters that you have, the less memory footprint that the model requires. Another really important thing to call out is with smaller parameter counts, it also makes the models more easily adaptable. So a smaller parameter actually makes the model more, oops, more adaptable. And this means it's easier to create domain specific models with small language models. Got it. So if I understand correctly, those popular LLMs that we've grown accustomed to using every day, 
they need to know a lot about a lot of things. Absolutely. But there may be, you can have cases where you don't need to know everything about everything. And you can do use fewer parameters like in an SLM. And because you're using fewer parameters, you can have less latency, use less memory, and be more adaptable. But I'm curious, in addition to simply having less parameters, are there any special techniques SLM use so that it can run more efficiently? Yeah, absolutely. One really popular way to improve the efficiency of both LLMs and SLMs is a technique called quantization. And at a high level, what quantization is, is it is the trade-off of running a model at a lower precision in order to improve the latency, reduce memory footprint, and the impact on that is typically a slight degradation to accuracy. Now, where that works well in the favor of SLMs is because you have less parameters and less compounding effect, we've actually found that quantizing small language models doesn't have as much of a hit to accuracy. So when you are quantizing SLMs, you actually have a less impact to accuracy, even though you still get the same improvements to latency and memory footprint. Got it. So when an SLM is using fewer parameters and is using techniques like quantization, what effect does that have on the hardware requirements that are needed to run SLMs? Well, it gives you more flexibility. So when we're talking about large language models, you need massive GPU clusters to be able to run them. And that's typically why people leave that job to third-party providers to put those massive data centers and GPU clusters together. But with small language models, you have that flexibility. As we mentioned earlier, earlier, you can run these on a single instance, for example, within your own AWS environment, which allows you to run it in your own secure environment. Additionally, with quantization, you can take small models and be able to even run them on CPUs. And that sounds like something that is just all hype, but it's actually something that we've proven can work. And when we're talking about models that are roughly 10 billion parameters in size, quantized down to four bit, you actually can run them effectively on CPU. Thanks, Andrew. I look forward to learning more about how they exactly they can run on CPUs. But for now, I'd like to thank you for a, a great intro to small language models. Thanks, Nolan.